thrift store? Oh, what do you like mean? Hands, oh my gosh, they're floral. <laughs> it just depends on the style, I guess. So Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the vlog. Hi, I'm just getting ready for the day. It is Monday. When I'm filming this, you're literally gonna see this vlog tomorrow. We're just like hanging out today. We've had so much going on with like the new candle launch. And, like Romeo was um, doing like booths this weekend and like, you know, the renovation and then uh, the anatomy appointment. Like if our lives <laughs> could be any more chaotic in a third trimester of being pregnant. It, it, it's just absolutely wild. There's like so much happening, but now we're kind of closing things out. His boots are done. You know, like we got, um, I shared the new candle with you guys. And thank you so much to anyone that ordered the new candle. I'm so excited for you guys to get them and experience it in person. I feel like that is the major obstacle, you know, when it comes to candles is like, it's sold online and you can't smell it. You can't hold it. You can't experience it. So the dream is to be in, in shops and things so that you can actually like see them and hold them and smell them. And if you were wondering what the bump looks like at 31 weeks, here he is. Look at this. This is crazy. Like, I just can't believe it. Like, I knew that this dress would be good. Like as I was growing because it, it you know, had room in here, but like, oh, so crazy that I feel like it was just yesterday that we found out we were pregnant. So I feel like it's like going so quickly, but we found out we were pregnant in October and it's April. That's time is, is a wild concept. So I definitely want to do some stuff around the house and do some projects. And I think I'm pretty much done with like my computer work. So I don't have to like sit at the desk today, which is good. I want to like move my body and move around. I think that Romeo and I are gonna go get some lunch, which is always nice because we haven't really seen, we haven't really seen each other. He's been working so much, I've been working so much. We haven't really been doing things together. And we, last night we took a. I asked him. I was like, "Do you know what my love language is?" Well, he didn't know what like the. I guess the five. I think there's five. He didn't know what the five were, so he didn't really know how to answer. He was like, "No." He was like, "What do you mean?" He didn't. He didn't know what I meant. So I took a. I, I took a test, but it wouldn't tell me what it was. And I just showed him what the different ones were. <laughs> and mine is definitely quality time. Oh my God, what are they? Oh, acts of service, like doing things for for you. No, I don't need anything done for me. Uh, gifts and receiving gifts. No, don't buy me anything. Quality time, yes. Oh, words of affirmation is another one. No, good compliments and stuff. No, I don't like, no, I just want to spend time with you. Like that. <laughs> really good so when we're apart I think that that was what was so heavy on me specifically when I was at the cottage so much and COVID was kind of like keeping us from traveling back and forth and when you know, we were trying to navigate um this like kind of like new situation that we were in where I was like working on a project in Texas and then he was in in LA but then he would come something it, it was all like really hard and so since my love language is like quality time we weren't spending a lot of, it was like it was hard it was really hard because I just like like to be you know he's a likable human I like to be around him so since we haven't seen each other um because we've been working so much this past like week and a half or so we're gonna go have lunch <laughs> so the guys are back today to work on the kitchen and they are, I believe today they're floating the sheetrock. If you guys missed the last episode, episode three of the kitchen renovation, it's already live. You'll get to see the process from like electrical and plumbing to insulation, drywall, like all of it. Like we, it was, I'm trying to do this series in like batches and stuff. So you really get to see like transformations come from every episode, which is really exciting. And so you really get to see the room look like a room. Like you get to see the kitchen like in its form because the sheetrock is up. So they still had some more work to do on it. Obviously they have to add like the skim coat, like the, I say texture lightly because we are going with like a smooth texture. So it's not really texture, but like they have to do that. They have to um, patch some of the stucco that's on the outside uh, because we closed up a window and a door, you know, so that used to be open. So they have, they filled it now that they have to add the stucco in 
and just some other like you know damage that throughout the renovation that that we need to fix so they're working on that and they should be starting our cabinetry boxes soon because now all the measurements are completed which you guys will see like a whole video on the cabinetry which i'm really excited about um and i get to go to the factory and like actually see that being done which is really exciting because you know, I built all of the cabinetry in Texas. So I have an appreciation and a respect for the time and the uh, like specificity, specificity, is that a word? Like the very specific details of it, the very specific measurements and things. I have, have a lot of respect for that. So going through the process of building up the shop measurements and stuff, it's like, I've been there, done that. I know, I know. I just know we're going to have like our appliances starting to come in soon. Some stuff has started to arrive, like some outdoor lighting, the sink. Uh, we're still waiting on our oven and some other stuff. So like, things are going to be like trickling in. And obviously that stuff is a little early. Installing the appliances will be pretty much like towards the end of the process, which towards the end of the process at the rate we're moving is going to be like tomorrow. Oh, by the way, this mascara is almost empty and I always like to recommend things that I actually will use the whole thing of. Kinsley's going crazy with her baby, sorry. Uh, this is um, from Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's their mascara, their lash sculpt. I love a, a big lash. I love like dark lash. I don't like, I didn't like the trend when they came and they were like, oh, we're not doing mascara. No, 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 that's not, that's not happening for me. Uh, this one is really good. I have used the Ilia one volumizing i think fullest volumizing mascara which is also good i was using that one for a while so i like them both equally but i've been gravitating towards this one like i really really like it so if you like a fuller lash you're gonna like this one a lot it's like almost there i'm gonna have to get a new one i did one eye so that you could see the difference I don't know if you can tell. This is obviously with mascara and without. My eyelashes are also super blonde, so that's why I always like a, a bold lash. But it's like still feels natural. It's not too much, but it's like enough, you know. We went to eat and stop by the thrift store, and thrift they had. What, this is not a thrift store. No. What it's do like you mean? That's kind of like um, Crossroads, Buffalo Exchange, Second Street. And those aren't called thrift stores. Oh, you're not getting thrift prices. Yes, you are. He's claiming that this is not called a thrift store. Second hand boutique. You're not paying for full price. They have designer stuff too, which is actually really nice. He found some stuff, but I was looking at the wallets because I've been needing a wallet for a while. It had this like thrifted $8 wallet that I got from ThreadUp forever. <laughs> and it's like tearing. So <laughs> so funny. The guys, I don't know what they're talking about, but they're <laughs> very excited about it. Okay, so we're upstairs. This was the greatest decision that we've ever made. Like doing this storage and having everything super organized allowed me to have access to all of my photography equipment, like everything that I needed all in one place and organized. Oh, it's amazing. Romeo just helped me bring everything back up because I pulled a lot out because I was shooting and I was doing a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna put away some candles and some extra like boxes and packaging and stuff because I shoot all the product photography myself for the candles. So I kind of have like extras on hand and stuff, just like boxes and things. So we're gonna put all of them away. Slowly making my way through this room, we had like a lot of packages that came in that I was like ordering some stuff for the baby. Uh, and then some like just PR and stuff that had come in, uh, which I was excited about. So I ordered, I saw um, another influencer really loved this Ergo pouch from, it's like an Australian brand. It came with this little like temperature testing little card to see, but this is like the 2.5. So it wasn't the warmest, but it wasn't the coldest either. It's kind of like in between. Uh, so really liked she really liked it so i got it for him and then you can unsnap the arms when he starts to roll over and his arms can come out so i thought that was nice i got it in like a like an oatmeal color of course <laughs> i just don't like pattern i don't like prints i don't have anything printed in my own wardrobe i also got a box from rifle paper co oh 
Celebrating a new season, giftable games. Oh my God, it's so pretty. This domino set, look how pretty that is. Is it dominoes? It's legit dominoes. Oh my gosh, they're floral. I will, look how pretty that is. That's gorgeous. I like to have games like this, like pretty games to display uh, when we have like, when we host and playing cards. Those are so pretty. I always save all this stuff for presents and things. Got a box from Say. Favorite, I use their blush all the time. Their liquid blush and their lip oil I really like. New slip tint radiant all over concealer. Oh my gosh, what a pretty little bag. I love this. Maybe I can use this to take with me to the hospital for like my like moisturizers and stuff. I don't know what, I haven't even gotten to that point. I don't even know what I'm gonna be packing in my hospital bag. I need to see what other people pack, but I, I have some things that I know of that for sure are gonna go in, but I was like, should I bring like skincare and stuff? I don't know how long I'm gonna be there. I don't know how this is all gonna go. I have no clue. Oh, I love, this is another thing that I use from them all the time. Glowy Super Gel. They have two colors, the Star Glow and then the more bronzy one. I use both of them in different times of year. I love that. Drum Sunscreen, Slip Tint, Whoa. three and four. Thank you, this is so nice. Look at this pouch. Look how, like, inside. Okay, this, I have no idea. I have no idea. It's kind of cryptic, I don't know. Oh! <laughs> Wait, I did know. I just couldn't tell from the outside. Oh, this is so nice. Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna say it right, but I was really excited. They reached out to send me some stuff for the baby. This Mam, Mam company. And I bought a couple of pacifiers already because these were like rated the number one on the list on several lists that I had, I had read for newborns. So cute, zero to three. 45 years, a leader in premium baby goods. They were so nice to send these. So these are at different times. Oh, this is the exact one I bought. So we have two of them. And I don't know why, when we were at Target that day, shopping for like baby stuff like getting essentials they put all the newborn stuff on the bottom most women that are shopping for newborn stuff are pregnant and they have to keep getting down and i couldn't get up i was like i have to keep getting down really low to get the stuff i need for the newborn they should put the newborns high and then as they get older they should be on the bottom just saying this i'm kikaroo i think this is what, I think I ordered this on Amazon. I think this is the other changing pad. The one that has like really good reviews. Oh, it is. I was like, what is in this big box? Oh my gosh. Oh God, it's heavy. Nice. I essentially have two. I got one at Target that was fairly inexpensive to have upstairs in his nursery. And eventually everything will be located in the nursery, but I wanted like another station downstairs because I don't think that I'm, we either of us are gonna wanna go up and down the stairs 10 times a day to change the baby. I wanted another one downstairs, but a better quality one so that we could replace that one. This one was like top rated and then you can just clean it. And it's like, oh yeah, I mean, you can, you can tell the difference between the one I got up there and this one, you can definitely tell the difference. And I got it in this oatmeal color because it'll sit on top of our dresser. And it's sloped. I heard that was good too, for you know obvious reasons. Let's go see what this looks like on the dresser in our room. Ah, that's wonderful. I love that. Obviously, I won't keep this. Uh, maybe I will actually keep this this here because will it slip? Maybe I won't. I wanted something to like protect the dresser just in case, you know, there's like an accident, <laughs> an explosion of sorts. There's like some kind of protective thing for the dresser. We'll figure that out, but this looks really good. I really like that a lot. Good morning, guys. It's the next day. <sighs> Today, since there, the guys aren't here to work on the kitchen yet today, I want to go in and finally measure how big we can get our like table because i need to source a table i want it to be old <laughs> i want it to be similar to the entryway table in style and coloring 
you know, that kind of like a bleached oak kind of look. I think it will help to tie the spaces together. I happen to love that style of furniture. We're kind of putting pieces throughout the house to keep the house really cohesive. So I think the having the darker cabinetry, stained cabinetry, and then the lighter table will give it exactly the look that I want. So we've got to determine now that we have the space open, what size table we can actually have. How big can it actually be without hindering the sink area of the kitchen? <laughs> Let's go inside and I'll explain why. Okay, welcome to the current state of the kitchen. Now that we've uncovered the actual structure of this room and how we figured out like the center of the room for the slope of the roof and everything, it's all very odd because this space used to be multiple spaces. It was part kitchen here where we used to have our kitchen. But then this part was a patio, and then all where you are used to be a patio. So the roof line kind of adapted over time, and the space kind of adapted over time. So like this side of the room is a tad higher than where the slope comes down on that side. The center of the room is in between the two beams, which is here, which is the center of that wall, but the whole room kicks out on that side. So the center, it's not the center over here, which it makes the room a lot lo a larger, but you had, we had, basically I had to pick a point. What point do I want the center of the space? And what I wanted is when you walked into the room right where you are, you're gonna get the view when you walk into the room. And I wanted the center of this room to be the center of the pitch of the roof and the center of this wall because that's what you're going to see first you know when you when you come in and you turn around and you look at this side you're less inclined you know to like look at where, where the center is you just have to pick a point you know sometimes when you're working with kind of like odd spaces which i like odd spaces i think it gives character and something different you're using what you've got and I, I really like that so now that we know where the center of the space is we can determine where the table is going to sit and how big we can get the table without hindering this side over here where the sink is going to go and that's our main point of concern the bigger the table if it sits in the center where i want it to sit it's gonna close the space between the sink and the end of the table. And that, that's what we don't wanna do. So I only wanna go as big as I can and still make this area of the kitchen comfortable. <laughs> you know, all these things that you gotta think about. I was thinking this whole time that I could get like away with like seven foot. Okay, it's 84. Half of 84 is 42. So I'm gonna put 42 in the center of the roof. That's about the same. That's just, that looks pretty decent. Okay, so the table will stop here. Ooh, I think it's too tight. Seven foot. But there's plenty of room on the other side. So it's like if we go with a smaller table, it's gonna kind of like look miniature in the scale of a room because of where it needs to be positioned. The only other alternative is to kind of shift the table off center because we have so much room over there by the doors and still get the seating that we need and everything. This is hard, giving you a different view. This is the, you're standing at the oven now. Only gives us, gives us four foot from the wall. We've got two foot of cabinetry. It gives us two foot walking on the side of the table. See how it feels too cramped? Like you want at least three foot. That's ideal. So if we go with a seven foot table, it's gonna have to shift a foot off center with no chair on the end, which we don't think that we'll live with like that all the time. Like we, I wanted to see eight comfortably, which is a seven foot table seats eight pretty well because three on one side, three on the other, two at the ends. But I don't think for every day we will ever have the two chairs on the end there because it just creates something in the way. We'll just have the six. So if we shift it off center, it gives us three feet. Okay, it's like, don't break the tape. No, no, no. It gives us like to break through the paper. 
It's the plastic. Okay, so seven foot from here is here. Oh my gosh, over six foot on this side. So we have four foot on that side and six, so we have two extra feet on that side of the room. With no cabinetry, so that's the stores. I think I'm gonna go with a seven foot table. I think it's like things that are out of balance for me or like off center freak me out unless they're super intentional. Now that we have decided to go with just one light, it makes me feel more comfortable with things being purpose, purposely off center, if that makes sense. With two lights, putting something off center makes it a little weird. <laughs> it's like one's kind of in the center, but then one's way at the end of your table. And that gets a little funky, but I think one light, one big light, I think that's what we need to measure too, because I need to like find a light. I think seven foot it is. And we just, we, we just make it work. You know, we're just making this space work, really. Okay, for the light, the center between the two beams is just shy of five foot. I want the light to be pretty substantial. So I'd, I'd like it to be every bit of like four, four foot circular. It's like I couldn't decide on this stuff earlier, like the furniture and the lighting, because it, it was coming so much later in the process. So we had time, but I couldn't decide because I'm like, I don't know what's happening in the room. Like I'm a very visual person. I can't make a lot of decisions before something's gotten started, you know? So like things like granite and tile haven't been decided yet because I needed to get to a point where I know the stain. And like, we were for sure going to be able to patch the floor. We weren't gonna run any issues. And like, you know, just things like that. Like I just, I. You feel a lot of pressure to make a lot of decisions in a renovation because you've got a lot of people asking me like, okay, do you have this? Do you have that? Did you set on this? Do you set on that? And you, I just, I'm a big believer in just taking it one step at a time. You know, like it was really important to figure out the structure and to figure out the cabinetry, you know? Then you move on to the next stage. And if you break it up into phases, a lot more digestible and you can actually tackle the renovation with purpose instead of just being like overwhelmed with all of the choices that you have to make. You know what I mean? Okay, light. Three, let's see, three and a half. Three, one, two, three, four, five, six. That'd be 42 inches. Forty-two is pretty good. I think I say three to three and a half would be really decent. And I'm definitely thinking round because I wanna fill out the space. I have been looking for like antique and vintage lights that maybe have been like rewired or could be rewired kind of thing so that we can update the wiring so it's not a fire hazard or anything like that. But when I search for French lighting, you kind of run into a couple of styles. You run into really heavy on the crystals, like a chandelier that has lots of crystals. And I don't think I want to do crystals. I actually am pretty confident I don't. The crystals for me add a feminine touch to it. And I think I want to keep the space a little more on the organic side. And I don't think that the crystals are the direction I want to go. So I'm thinking more metal, like still candelabra, but more metal, so to speak. So let's go, let's go see what we can find online. So three, what did we say? Three to three and a half. I need to write that down so that I know I've kind of like measured the space. And then our table, we'll go with seven foot. Okay, so there's this light. This light, candelabra, chandelier, 47. Oh, they make two sizes of this light. 32 and a half, which is smaller than what we would kind of like, like a little bigger than that, or 47. That's like a small and a large. But something like this, you see how it's like, has the French style, but it feels more organic, like more metal and wood detailing. That's kind of like the look I wanna to go to. Like this, this chandelier could literally have crystals hanging off of it as well. Like it's, you know, you, it's kind of like you could do both. Basically, I want the chandelier without all the crystals on it. I want the, the shape of it, but I like how it kind of goes up and then comes down like that. I don't want anything too like simple. I think our space lends to having more like I like more like more like more messy like more 
arms or more detailing. I don't want it to be like super simple because then I feel like it's too like modern. Let's look on Etsy because Etsy's actually a pretty good place to find more some like some vintage. Okay, French candelabra chandelier is what I'm searching for. See, like like this one, like I want more arms than that. I feel like it's too cagey. It feels too like a caged light. And see if there's crystals on it. I don't love that. I don't like things that are overly floral too. Or sometimes they can lend a little more like Mediterranean, like in the south of France where you're really close to the Mediterranean Sea or closer to Italy. You know, they kind of have lots more leaf like kind of designs. It just depends on the style, I guess. They're like what I kind of like gravitate towards. Antique French solid bronze, seven branch. Vintage from the 19th century, rare antique French solid bronze candle. And converted for electric electricity in about 1920 and could be rewired. What's the size? Oh, where does it come from? You also have to look a lot on Etsy, like where is it coming from? Ships from France, 32 inches in total height. The chain is 13 inches, 16 inches in diameter. That's tiny. I've seen a couple like this before at various like estate sales and stuff. They're obviously like attached to the house, <laughs> but like this kind of style, you see how it has a little bit of a leaf kind of scroll happening. And these are both like either bronze or brass. See all the crystals? I just, like, I can't do it. Not that it's not pretty, it's just, oh my God, look at this crystal. <laughs> Wild. There are a couple of lighting stores um, over like down, like towards like Abrea in LA and stuff over by that other uh, antique hardware place that I used to go to. But I've been to those places. I haven't ever found anything that I absolutely loved. So I felt like I had more options if I was gonna like search online and just get it shipped. I've already looked on like websites like Cherished and I, I need to look on First Dibs. That's another like website that has more antique furniture and, and, and lighting and stuff. Kids like, what just happened? What is she doing? Um, excuse me. That is not a chair. Oh, she just got more comfortable. I can't lean forward. The baby's in the way. Okay, Kinsley and I have been looking for like an hour now. <laughs> Sitting here. Um, it's like, I'm slowly narrowing down what I don't want. And I had to get off like first dibs and chairs really quickly because antique old lighting is really expensive. So the search will continue. We will go, um, maybe next vlog, maybe tomorrow we'll go Look in person, like go to those other hardware store places too that um, I wanted to go to that were in like a different area because we need to do that too. We have, we've got these that we found so far. I have a few of these that I got in Paris and we have our vintage ones that we've used in the kitchen already. You know, we kind of need to start building that stuff out. I need to start getting to those like pretty stage things. It's, it's just actually really exciting. We'll go to those stores and go take a look around and stuff. So um, for the rest, I didn't. I need to get this video edited and up for you guys. The rest of the day, I need to go get ready. I need to film, uh, record another podcast episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the first one. Design dilemmas and kind of like a more structured format. I I really enjoyed kind of recording it and um, I, 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 I think that it has value. If you're going to go into a, like a renovation, you're gonna do that. Go check it out, that was episode one. Episode two will be out on Wednesday and we're talking about like more when you buy a house that you don't have any character that you can pull from. It's like a new build, like a, I call them like the white boxes. Like when we were looking at houses, I was like, I don't wanna see any white boxes, you know? So the new builds that are in like new suburban areas that are like newly developed that you're, you're not having this history to pull from. So you don't have like a starting off point or a jumping off point for your style or design. And it can be overwhelming because it's like, or intimidating because it's it's like a blank slate. It's like a blank canvas. It's like, what do you do? If you could do anything, what do you do? And, and do some more design dilemmas, of course. So stay tuned for that. Make sure that you're subscribed over on the podcast, YouTube, uh, or if you follow along just in audio. I will see you guys again in a few days for more content, either the podcast or another vlog. Um, and then they are gonna keep working on the kitchen. And we're gonna keep working on the kitchen. We got, a, we got a lot of decisions to make now that I haven't made already. Like the design was in place, but now the pretty stage, 
we need to start we need to start doing some stuff so i'll see you guys really really soon bye guys